appreciate the goodness of the Lord. And then the Bible tells us that the goodness of God leads us to repentance, leads us to Him. And so we thank God for His goodness. I want to read to you tonight for the message from your favorite book in the Bible, the book of Proverbs. It's my fa- one of my favorites. I think if more people read Proverbs, the world will be in a better place. Really. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really will. It'll keep, man. A lot of wisdom in this book. I want to read um, Proverbs 13, verses 13 through 20. I mean, there's so much I can read from it, but I don't want to make it a lengthy reading. So I'll read verse 13 through 20 for the Bible reading. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding give it favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth up, layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You can keep going on and on and on. <laughs> it's nothing but good, solid wisdom. But I want to use verse um, 15 as our text. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. I want to use that, and with the help of the Lord, tonight I want to preach, just for a little while, on a message entitled, A Better Way, A Better Way. And we understand, hopefully, what I'm talking about as we get into the Bible reading and the message. Let's look to God in prayer tonight. Ashley, why don't you pray for the message? Thank you, Lord, for this time to be with you in your house. We ask you to bless the message, the messenger. Give us ears to hear, Lord. Help us to receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God for His Word tonight. And I'm preaching about a better way. And when you look at this scripture and, and you know, many others, especially in the book of Proverbs, like you said, there's so, so, much, so much wonderful things, so many wonderful things written here and so many life-altering things that you can take from the book of Proverbs and apply it to your life and make your life a whole lot better. And when you look at it, though, from this text, he seems like he's comparing two different ways. You know, you can choose two different choices. You can choose one way or you can choose the other. Even as Jesus taught us about the narrow path that leads to life and the broad way that leads to destruction, it goes right along the same teaching here. And so he started out in verse 13. He said, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. So that's one choice. And the word, of course, is speaking about the word of God, the laws of the Lord. And so he said, if a person despised the Bible, despised the word of God, despised the doctrines and the teachings of the word of God, he said they will be destroyed. That's one choice. And then on the other hand, he said, but he that feareth or have reverence and respect for the commandments shall be rewarded. So we see in one way, and then we see in another way. One is... uh, You could choose, and it will lead to destruction, as he said, even in the same or the same book in chapter 14, verse um, 12. He said, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Right? And so he's saying, There's one way we can choose (laughs) that goes to destruction, the broad way, or there is a better way that we can choose that leads to life that will be rewarded. 
that leads to everlasting life. And so I'm talking about a better way, a way that God provided for us. He said that the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world is under condemnation. Jesus said, I, I didn't come to condemn the world. He said the world is already condemned. The world is already under the judgment of God. But through Jesus Christ, through the mercy of God, through the death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, God provided for us a better way. And so we don't have to be stuck in one way of life or one way of thinking. We don't have to follow the way of death and destruction. There is a better way for us. Amen? And I'm thankful tonight that each and every one of us here made that choice to follow the right way, the better way. And it's not the easy way. He didn't say it was the easy way. He said it is the better way. Because the narrow way is not the easy way. The broad way is the easy way. The broad way, he said, many go in there at, and they just coast right on in, do whatever they want, live however they want to live, uh, uh, allow anything in their life. They're just going right along. But he said that way leads to destruction. Jesus said if you go into the narrow way, which means you got to squeeze you got to get rid of the unnecessary things or the ungodly things and all the hindrances. you got to get rid of all that. But when you enter into it, yes, it will be tough. It will be challenging and all that stuff. But he said the end is what matters. The end leads to everlasting life. And same exact thing is what he's sharing here. He said, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. That's the hard way. But he that feareth the commandments shall be rewarded. He said, the law of the wise is a fountain of life. That's a good way to follow the law, of the, the law of the wise, to depart from the snares of death. And I like this. He said, good, understand it, give it favor. Thank God for a good understanding. Amen. Amen. Thank God for a good understanding. You know, the Bible speaks about it in the book of Hebrews chapter, chapter 11, verse 1, I think it is, or, or one of those verses. He said, he said, by faith we understand. Right? By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You see, faith is that way that gives us understanding. We're not going to always understand everything in life. We're not always going to understand every battle that comes our way. We're not going to understand all the principles and teachings of the, of the Bible, fully comprehend everything that God may require of our lives. But he said when we approach it, through the eyes of faith, when we approach it through the method of faith that I'm trusting God, I'm believing God, I'm putting my hope or my confidence in God, I'm, I'm letting Him be the one leading me and guiding me. He said that faith will give you an understanding that you have made the right choice and you are following in the better way uh, instead of the ways of the world. Amen? So He said, good understanding, give it favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. People wonder a lot of times, why is my life so hard? Sinners wonder that. Why is my life so hard? And, and, and even though I have a lot of things, why is it still that I can't seem to find true purpose and happiness and fulfillment? Why is it that though I have so much going for me, why is it that it's still so hard? Right? It's because the Bible tells us that the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. The way of a sin, sin life, sinful life is hard. And so God understanding that, he know that the way of the transgressor is hard. The Bible said he presented to us a different way. He presented to us a different way as Jesus told us when he was teaching in the book of John. He said, a thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, but I am come that you may have life and that you may have it, what? More abundantly. God provided a better way. A better way, not the way of the transgressor, which is hard, but the way of understanding, the way of faith, the way of knowing who God is. He said in verse 16, Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but the fool layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. And then he went on and all the stuff that we shared there about it. But I'm using it as a thing to, to compare the two. He said, we can choose either, all right? We can go in the way of the transgressor, which is hard, or we can go in the way of the believer, which is easy. 
And so I'm preaching tonight about a better way, using that as our text. He said, God, he said, good understanding, give it favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. A transgressor is, is someone who transgresses, in the, in the sense of the Bible, transgresses the, 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 um, the commandments of God. It means to go beyond limits or a set or prescribed boundary to violate a divine law, to go beyond the, the limitations that are set. And so we know that God set boundaries in his word. God has principles. God has laws. God has precepts. God has commandments. And God has boundaries that he set up in the word of God. And he said when a person goes beyond those boundaries, they become a transgressor. And he said that is a very hard life. To live, But when we stay within the limitations of the laws of God, when we stay within the boundaries of the word of God, he said there will be understanding, there will be knowledge, there will be faith, and that God by his mercy and grace will lead us in a better lifestyle. And we know that from the very beginning of mankind, we cross that boundary, right? Oh boy. <laughs> From the very beginning, we crossed that boundary. God told Adam and Eve, he said, I give you a good way to live. I created a perfect garden with everything you want, everything you need, everything is there. He said, but don't, don't cross this line. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was just one boundary, just one limitation he put upon them. They had every tree to eat of. Every tree was good. Every tree had beautiful fruits and tasty fruits, no doubt. Every tree was pleasant. The Bible, because we know God just gives nothing but the best, right? And the Garden of Eden was a paradise with all the blessings and all the good things of God. But there was a boundary that he set. And he told him, don't cross this boundary. Don't eat of this tree. And the Bible said they transgress it. And you know what happened after that, right? Adam started to work. <laughs> He started to sweat. Problems, difficulties, all these things. And what I'm saying is the way of that transgressor is very hard. From that day forward, he understood what hardness was all about. He understood from that point on what sweating and working and misery and pain and heartache and rebellion was all about because as he began to have children, they began to rebel and they began to fight and they kill and kill and, and all this stuff was happening all because they went beyond the boundaries that God said do not cross. He said, don't cross this line. Don't go beyond this boundary. And because they went beyond that boundary, they became transgressor. And the Bible said the way of a transgressor is hard. But aren't you thankful that because of, the, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we who sometimes were transgressors, who were once disobedient, who we, we who push the boundaries of God and cross the line God has given unto us mercy and grace and by his son Jesus Christ he showed us a better way amen he opened up a better way for us that we no longer have to be transgressors of the word of God we can be followers of Christ we can be faithful to God and instead of judgment we can receive favor instead of a punishment and hardship and misery we can have the love of God God and the blessings of God resting upon our life all because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so when he made that statement in, in John, he said, A thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. He said, But I am come that ye might have life and that ye might have it more abundantly. And so he used the word abundantly, which means that God is not tight or stingy with what he gives to his people, right? He said, God, God he said that, that he come that you may have life. And when he's talking about life, he's not talking about the, the breath that we breathe, the air that we breathe, and those kind of things, the natural life. He's talking about real, purposeful life, right? A life that, uh, not without problems or trials or difficulty, but a life that have a God-centered purpose in it. A life that have fulfillment. A life uh, that, you know, if a Christian will just... Uh, do the right things and obey the word of God, there will be happiness in that person's life. There will be joy in that person's life. 
there will be peace in that person's life because God is not a liar. Amen. And so when he said, I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly, he was letting us know that he was giving us a better way of living. Or a more excellent way, if you can think about it that way, that he has given unto us a more excellent way of living our life. We don't have to live like everybody else. We don't have to go through the same things that sinners go through. Yes, we understand that we live in the world and that we're all faced with the same thing as the Lord said, as the Bible said, that he will cause his rain to fall on the just and on the unjust and he will cause the sun to shine on the just and on the unjust and that problems do come to righteous people. We understand that. Trials and battles and everything. But think about this. When everything is happening to the li- in the life of a transgressor or a sinner, who do they have to turn to? Right? When life overwhelms them, who do they have to turn to? When their resources and their, and their finances can't fix their problem, who do they have to turn to? They don't have Jesus Christ because they don't believe in him, right? And if maybe they will in times turn to him, but I'm saying they don't have that relationship. But when, when you're walking with God and you're serving God and you've given your life to the Lord and something comes to your life that is bigger than you, who do you turn to? Man, thank God that I can get on my knees and say, Lord, I need some help. Amen. I need some help and my God will help. He will send me the help I need when I need it. And so that's what I'm talking about. It's a better way of living, not just depending on my abilities and my strength and my uh, uh, knowledge and wisdom and my ability to provide. Yes, all those things are needed, but I'm thankful that when I come to my wit's end or when I come to my limitation, there is someone greater than I. There is someone much better than me, greater than me, someone that is a, a much, quali- much more qualified and I am and I can run to him and I can bury my head in, in my chair wherever I'm praying and I can say Lord God take this burden from me God I'm bringing all my cares and all my concerns and I'm just dumping it in the lap of Jesus I have someone I can turn to in my time of need amen I have someone I can cast my burdens upon and that's a better way to live that's a better way to live to know that I have help available to me 24-7. There's a lot of people that live their life with no help. And what I mean by that is they don't have any good relationships to where they can turn to someone and say, hey, I need some help in this moment of my life. Amen. They don't have that, uh, that relationship uh, with others that they can turn to and say, you know, I've, I, I've come, to, I've done all I can do, but I still need some help. You know, could you help me? They don't have that. They don't have that. And, and, and it's very sad to live that way to where you can't turn to anyone because you have never built any good relationship with anybody to help you. Amen? But as a child of God, I'm thankful. Though I have others I can depend on and turn to, there is one I can always turn to. There is one who tells me does not ever sleep. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't doze off on the job. He doesn't quit in the middle of the battle. He doesn't walk away from a challenge. He's always faithful. He said uh, said that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Amen. He said that I may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Uh, What shall man do unto me? Or who shall I be afraid of? Or whatever it is. Uh, He said, I don't have to to worry about all this stuff. He said, God is my helper. (laughs) Amen. God is my helper. And so there's a better way of living because Jesus made us a promise. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I'd rather live that kind of a lifestyle. I'd rather be in that position where I have God in my life, where I have a better way of living life altogether, not by might or by power, but by the God that made me and created me and is able to help me. In Matthew 19, verse 29, Jesus said this to to his disciples, He said, and everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. You see, God will reciprocate with a better and more excellent things when we 
follow in the way that leads to a better life. Amen? When we follow God, He will reciprocate. He already made us the promise. He told the disciples, He said, And everyone that had forsaken houses. In other words, we don't put these things before God. Right? We don't put a house before God or our brothers or sister before God. We don't put our father or our mother before God. We don't put our wife or our children before God or our land or any of those things. We don't put it before God. God is God. And he said when we do that or have that kind of attitude to say, I'm willing to walk away from anything that God gave me. Amen. That I may be right in the sight of God. That none of these things, I'm thankful for everything. I appreciate everything. I will use everything he gave me. I will enjoy all his blessings, but um, if, it, if it comes down to it, I will have God before it all. Amen? And every one of us should be that way as a Christian. He said when we have that kind of a personality, he said, in this life you will receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. That's a better way of living. Amen? That's a better way of living tonight to have God in your life. You see, the life of faith is a more... It's a better way to live. It's wonderful to be able to rely on God for everything. Like I said, sinners don't have this privilege. Yes, God is merciful unto sinners. He's merciful unto people altogether. And in their time of need, if they reach out to Him, He's a good God. The Bible said He's kind even unto the unthankful. Right? That's scripture. He's kind even unto the unthankful. And so he's kind, he's wonderful, he's loving, but really they don't have any rights to walk up to God and say, God, you owe me this. Amen? They don't have that privilege of saying, God, you made me this promise. No, God made his followers that promise. God made those who said, I will deny myself, take up my cross, and follow him. Those are, the, those are the ones he made the promise to. And so all these things that are recorded in the scripture are for those who are willing to follow the better way, the narrow way that leads to life everlasting. And God is a wonderful God. Like I said, he's able and he's, he's very kind to everybody. But I'm thankful that there is a better way. I don't have to gamble whether or not God will work on my behalf. I don't have to gamble and, and say, well, you know, you know, I haven't been faithful to God or I haven't served the Lord or I haven't done this or I haven't considered Him. I haven't even thought about Him today, but now I have a need and I, I need to run to Him and, and that con condemnation and that doubt and, and everything kicks in. I don't have to live like that. There's a better way to live. Amen. There's a better way to live, and that way is to just live a life of faith. There's a better way to live, and that's a life where you say, God, yes, I thank you for everything in my life, but I will never stop believing you, Jesus. I will never stop trusting in you. I will never stop putting you first in my life. As he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, all these things shall be added unto you. Everything that we have need of, the Lord will provide. He never fail anyone with a need. Now he may hold back at once and he may keep back a desire, but a need is a totally different thing. Amen. A need is a totally different thing. And he said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You see, we have to, we have, the way of faith is a better way. I'm talking about a better way. The better way is the life that Jesus called us to live. Not the transgressor. He said, that's a hard life. It is a hard life. I talk to sinners all the time. I listen to them. I, 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 I sit there and listen to them as they're talking and listen to how hard things are. And sometimes the simplest of things is so challenging, so hard. Some of them have no peace. They, don't even, they can't even define the word happiness because they haven't been happy in years. Amen. I can't say that for myself. I have battles, I got challenge, I have pressure. <laughs> I got all kinds of things in my life, but I'll tell you one thing. I am happy. <laughs> Amen. I am peaceful. I have joy in my life. 
I, I don't need anything in this world to make me happy. I'm, I'm very serious. I thank God for every blessing, but my happiness doesn't depend on anything in this life. Amen. I got to have, my heart is filled with God, and there is joy in my soul, and I can rejoice in every situation. I'm not saying I'm always thankful for every situation, but I can rejoice in every situation because I know in whom I believe in. Amen. I know who, in whom I believe in, and I have chosen personally chosen to follow the better way. I've chosen to walk in that narrow way that leads to life. I've made up my mind that I will follow the way that leads to godliness and holiness and truth and in the end everlasting life and that's a better way of living. Amen? And it's a way of faith. It's a way of faith as the Bible says for we walk by faith not by sight. You go by sight there will be a lot of discouragement. You go by sight, there'll be a lot of problems. There'll be a lot of things because we don't always see. You know, we don't always see. You know, I saw the illustration came up the other day. God knows <laughs> when I need things, things just come up, boom. He's talking about a man. He's working and he's working and he's working. And he's working and there's no result. He's digging for gold or treasure, whatever it is. And he's digging and he's digging and he's digging. And he got all the way and he quits and he walked away. And then the picture showed that if he had just kept going a little bit further, <laughs> he would have hit it. He would have hit it, right? He would have hit it, but he quits. Oh, do I need it so many times in my life? Do I need it every time? Oh, God, when am I going to hit this thing? <laughs> when am I going to break through, Lord? When are this thing going to fall? And, and this big boulder that I've been chipping at for years, when is it going to crack? But it talks about determination and keep chipping and keep chipping at it. And it's not always easy. The road less traveled, right? It's not always easy. But I tell you what, it's a better way. Because it leads to the things that people can't find in this world. It leads to the, 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 the joy and the fulfillment of life. And think about it. What, is it. what good is it if a person have everything but they're not fulfilled? You know? And we know, I never preach against blessings. I, I thank God for every blessing. <laughs> Amen. As he said here, he said, uh, in, uh, he said the, the, um, about being reward. He said, "Whoso despises the word, the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the com the commandment shall be rewarded." Right? So I want the rewards. I want the blessings. I want God to bless my life. I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, in, in that group that say I don't serve God for the blessings. I serve God because He's God. But if there's blessings attached to that. Give it to me, Jesus. Amen. Give it to me, Jesus. I'll take it. Whatever the Lord have, I'll take it. And so I'm telling there's a better way. There's a better way of serving and living. And that is the way of faith. Never giving up. Never giving up. But just walking by faith. Like I said, if you go by sight, there will be a lot of discouragement. There will be a lot of things because a lot of times, also in my own personal life, sometimes God is working on me. Right? Sometimes uh, he's working on me, you know, trying to make me a better person, trying to refine, refine my faith in him, trying to take me and make me a better person, right? And so we have to always walk by faith. And, and so we see this throughout the scripture. I said I was going to preach for a little while, huh? I still got four more pages to go. <laughs> but we'll leave all the pages together. Who cares about all that, right? But I'm talking about a better way. There is a better way. He said, the way of the transgressor is hard. And like I said, a transgressor is one that pushes the boundaries. Adam and Eve were transgressors. God said, have everything else, but don't, don't, don't eat from this tree. And they pushed that boundary. And they said, well, let's see what happens. Well, they found out what happened, right? When the lost paradise, they were kicked out of the garden, and those two that were created to live forever, die. He said, the day you eat it, you shall surely die. Immediately, they died spiritually because they were separated from God. They're kicked out of their blessing. And then time progresses, they die physically. And I do not know, and I cannot speak of it. I don't know what happened in their life unless God, I don't know if God gave them any mercy or not. But if God did not give them mercy, then they are in hell unto this day. Adam and Eve, the first two perfect human beings that were created. Now, like I said, I don't know. I can't, I'm, that's not you know, my place to speak, whether God gave them mercy or not. But if they have never repented, 
and we see the progression of sin from that time. It got just worse and worse. So who knows what all happened, you know, what happened. But I'm saying it became very, very hard. The way of the transgressor is very hard. But he said when we, you know, he said it, good understanding gave it favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. So I'm talking about a better way. Give me the way of understanding, right? Give me the way that say, yeah, I may not, I may not know everything, but I know by faith that if I follow God and do what's right and serve God, everything's going to be all right. Amen. That's the way I'm talking about. The better way is that way of understanding. As he said in Hebrews, he said, by faith we understand. <laughs> right? By faith we understand that God did all these things. And so how do you live your life? You can come to this minute. How do you live your life? The better way is that way of faith, of just understanding that God is still in control that way of faith of understanding that you know god is not gonna leave me or abandon me in my time of need that way of faith that says that god is for me and he said if god be for me who can be against me? That's the way that I'm talking about tonight. Not the way that pushes the boundary. Not the way of those who say, I want to see how much I can get away with. Not those who say, I'm going to try to see how much I can push God and still, you know, feel comfortable with. No, that's the way of the transgressor. I don't want that. That's a hard way of living. I want that way to say, God, by faith, I take your word. By faith, I believe the doctrines in the Bible. By faith, I know that everything Everything that is written in the word of God is for me. And he said that if I love that way, he said, I will be rewarded. Amen. I will be rewarded. That's the better way tonight. Is that way of faith that, that said, God, your word is what I will live by. Your word is my bread. He said, your word, your, your word is my water that I drink, my spiritual water, my bread that I eat. Your word is my strength. Your word is everything that's the better way of living. Not the way of trying to push the boundaries. Amen. But the way of saying, God, I will walk by faith. I will believe you, Lord. I will trust you, Jesus. Even when I don't see, I will believe. Even when I don't understand it all, I will still have that faith. Even when... I don't know everything that goes on. I will still say, I will hold on to Jesus. That's the better way I'm talking about. It's the way of believing God and his promises as he give, us, give it to us in the scripture. And I don't know if I made sense and get all the message together here, but whatever. I don't want the way of the transgressor. There's no peace. There's no hope. There's no nothing for the transgressor. But a way for the believer, that's a better way. Amen. That's the way of happiness and peace and everything in God. And so tonight, as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord, and as we spend some time in prayer, choose the better way. Not the way of, trans, of the transgressor. Not the way of those who push the limits, cross the boundaries. But choose the way of peace, the way of love, the way of God, the way of faith. That's a better way tonight. Amen. Let's all spend some time in prayer. We should play and sing.
Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you all. For all your joining us online, pray you have a blessed week and weekend. And remember, Lord willing, we'll be here Sunday morning at 9.30 or Sunday morning worship. We encourage you to join us and pray for the service and, and let God bless your soul. Amen. And for us there, we'll be here Sunday morning. We'll be here um, Saturday also. Hopefully the weather will be nice, do some soul winning and continue to work of the Lord. Father, thank you for your goodness and mercy. We love you. We appreciate you, God. just want to give you all the glory tonight. Thank you for your love and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.